Okay, so today we're talking about a new pair of lenses. They've been out for a few weeks now, but these are by Sure, and they are part of their Sniper series, the 16mm and the 75mm f1.2. So I'm a little bit behind on making this review. These, they sent me these lenses a few weeks ago um, and I've been working on this review, but I, I have faced a couple of problems with these lenses that I wanted to address. So this video is really gonna be like a, a pros and cons list of these lenses. I have some sample footage and sample photos from both of these, both of these lenses that I'm gonna show, but this is not an extensive long-term review. Um, as that's just gonna take me a little bit more time. But first impressions wise, are these lenses worth it? Well, that actually gets very complicated. So these lenses have a lot of pros and a handful of cons to them. And then the question is, do the pros outweigh the cons for you or are the cons far too severe for you to want to pick up these lenses? First off, physically, these lenses are fantastic. They're very well built. They feel great. They're quite, they're very lightweight for an F1.2. Uh, the focus ring is like this metal uh, focus ring here. And the lenses overall look really nice. Now these are the black ones. They've got like a sort of carbon carbon fiber kind of feel. I have no idea if that's actually carbon fiber or not, it's probably plastic. I have no idea. But, um, you know, it's got a carbon fiber kind of look to it, a nice metal focus ring with some silver accents with a little bit of blue on on the top. Overall, very pleasing looking lens. On the back here, you have all the expected electronic contacts that you would expect to find, plus a USB-C port, which is gonna come in handy later. We're gonna have to talk about that. Now on the 16 millimeter, you have a front diameter of 58 millimeters um, for the filters. So if you wanna attach filters on the front of this, it's 58 millimeters. Whereas on the 75 millimeter lens, it is a 67 millimeter filter thread on the front. I personally would much prefer it if they matched across the board um, as then you only really need to get one set of filters etc. I've always preferred it just when when lens uh, series just have a matching lens filter size. It just kind of makes things a little simpler. Obviously they both come with lens hoods which are very handy if you're a photographer and you want to block out some sunlight and um, you know nice lens hoods. They don't cause any vignetting you know no problems there. Very, very nice. Now the, the 75 millimeter F1.2 I think is very impressive. First off, 75 mil F1.2 for this size of a lens for APS-C is very impressive. Same with the 16 millimeter. These are very small, uh, I think, for an F1.2 autofocus with all the bells and whistles that you can kind of expect. And the front element on this 75 millimeter is just beautiful. So these lenses on APS-C actually give you the equivalent focal range of a 24 millimeter and like a 105-ish millimeter. Okay, those aren't exact, but that's kind of the, if you were to get a full frame lens that's going to be similar to those, it's going to be like a 24 and a 105. So APS-C, you just add that 1.5 times crop. Now, an APS-C lens at f1.2, um, the background blur is going to look a little bit different. Technically, it's the same. It gets very complicated, um, but the equivalent background blur that you're seeing is also multiplied by 1.5. So that would bring this up to like an f1.8, which is very nice, pleasing background blur for, for um, any sort of image but you're not actually losing any light, right? This still is transmitting that same amount of light into the camera. It gets a little bit convoluted, um, so I definitely check out some videos explaining the crop factors and focal length differences of APS-C to full frame. But the background blur will look similar to that of an f1.8 of the equivalent focal length. If you were to have a full frame lens and put them side by side, uh, like a 105 f1.8 will look similar to this 75 f1.2. Another pro to these lenses is that they have a full set of lenses. So obviously this is these are the extreme ends, right? The 16 and the 75, but they have a whole set of lenses in between the 23, the 33, and the 56. So you have a full set of five lenses across the board, all f1.2, all with the same build quality, and they just seem really nice. Now, unfortunately, Sure didn't send me the other three, so I cannot speak to the effectiveness of those three lenses. I know Jason Morris and a handful of others have some great videos about those lenses, so please go and check those out before you consider purchasing the full set. I only have these two here, um, but hopefully, Sure, if you're interested, please just send me the full set so I can check to see that you know that they all actually work well together because because that's really important when it comes to a set of lenses. Now one minor con that I have is actually their lens caps. So the lens caps are fine. They're you know normal lens caps. They work really well. They stay attached. But I like to have my lenses face down on my shelf um, and these lens caps are just not perfectly flat. They're kind of slightly curved. So when you set them down there's just a little bit more wobble to them than I would personally like. So you know for these lenses I'm having them setting up this way 
not the end of the world, but a nice flat lens cap is always better in my opinion. Now overall image quality I think is fantastic. Obviously at f1.2 they're not going to be as sharp as a G Master lens, but I think they really do hold their own at, at f1.2. I think they're very impressive, especially for the price point, and that's one really important thing that you ought to consider when you're looking at lenses like these. You know, obviously we can look at things like chromatic aberration charts or sharpness charts and all these kinds of things. I don't tend to do that a whole lot on this channel, and there's loads of other great channels that do that, but what I'm looking for in lenses are character and design and, um, you know, sharpness yes, but not too much and not too little. And these just strike a really nice balance. I think they have a really nice sense of character to them. They're not perfect, but they're not perfect in a really good way that they make your image just a little bit more unique. Especially this 75 millimeter for portraits is fantastic. Obviously you get that really zoomed in um, field of view. It's really good for product photos as well. It's kind of what I've used uh, for a couple of my thumbnails recently, just getting that really nice compressed image of something. Um, and it just does a really good job. Autofocus has worked really well on this lens. Um, and and I've been very happy with it, particularly in photo mode. I haven't used it a whole lot for video. Um, I find a 105 millimeter, there's not a whole lot of use case, uh, in my opinion, for that sort of uh, focal length for video. Unless you're maybe doing like, you know, weddings for a ceremony and you sort of have a, a camera on sticks at the back of the, of the ceremony, you wanna get that zoomed in look. Probably a use, good use case for this, but um, I personally haven't done a whole lot of video with this lens. Definitely more designed for portraits, in my opinion. Now the 16 millimeter is very similar. Uh, sharpness wise, fantastic. Background blur, looks great. Autofocus works perfectly 95% of the time. And that other five is a bit of a disaster. So this lens is the one that I was actually far more excited about than the 75 because I use the 16 millimeter on my, for all of my YouTube videos. You're currently watching the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 and I thought, well, F1.2 for basically the same price, surely that's going to be a much better fit for my use case. And for the most part it is. It just works really well and it's cheap. I don't think I actually mentioned the price by the way, so the price of these is on screen here. I think it's very, very competitive. The set of three lenses uh, in between these two, you can get all three for a thousand dollars. You're looking at like three to four hundred dollars per lens, which is very, very competitive for autofocus f1.2 lenses for the Sony APS-C system. But with the 16 millimeter, I did face a problem. The autofocus on this lens works really well most of the time, and then occasionally what it would do is it would just start hunting like crazy. It would just pulsate like mad um, for just a second or two. Um, and I did decide to keep those in the videos of the last couple of videos to see if people would notice. And sure enough, I got a couple of comments mentioning it um, because it is very distracting. So to me, a 16 millimeter is perfect. Like that 24 mil equivalent is perfect for talking headshots. I absolutely love that focal length. Um, you get a good amount of showing off of your studio space and a lot of width where you can sort of talk a little bit more. It's, it's, it's just a good focal length for this style of shot for content creators. But the problem is you need autofocus to be working for that to be the case and I wish that this was working perfectly. Now I did contact Sura and I did tell him that this is a problem that I'm facing with this lens. Now they, they, now they did say that obviously you've got the USB-C port on the back and they're going to attempt to fix this problem with a firmware update. I don't have a date on that firmware update as to whether it is going to happen. There's no guarantee of that and I did email them saying in its current state I don't know if I can recommend this 16 millimeter for people who are using it for my use case. Now if you're using it for photography I've had absolutely zero problems with photography with either of these lenses for autofocus. But for video, every every five to 10 minutes, it would just start hunting and doing that pulsating, which for me makes it not really usable for my use case, which is specifically more YouTube type stuff. Now the good thing is whenever I told Sura this, I basically said, look, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to recommend this lens, you want me to send it back. I don't really wanna make a video about a lens I don't recommend. And they said, no, no, please go ahead and make the video. Give, me, give us all of your critiques. And they said, we want honest reviews. So honestly, just as, a, as far as like a company to a reviewer relationship goes, that's a really good sign. Um, and I really do hope that they get an update out for this lens. If you're a photographer and you're looking at getting F1.2 prime lenses, I think these are a fantastic option. Uh, they're, they're just great. For videographers, if you're doing very short little clips and you're not super concerned about autofocus, doing a little pulsating, you know, if you're not doing anything too concerning or you're just, you know, doing some home videos, you know, short little clips, it probably wouldn't be an issue with the 16 millimeter. But for YouTubers doing talking headshots like this, it drove me a little bit crazy and I don't know if I can recommend it yet. Now, if they do bring out an update that fixes that problem, absolutely. I think this is probably the best lens for YouTubers um, for these talking head style shots. But until that point, I don't think I'd recommend picking up this lens. On the flip side, the 75 millimeter for portraits and or even for more interesting shots, uh, looking for that really zoomed in compressed look, 
this thing's fantastic. I really enjoy this lens, big fan. I just wish that I had the full set to compare it and, and check them all out across the board. So overall, yes, these are a really good set of lenses options for the Sony APS-C system. The 16 millimeter has one major flaw. Uh, and again, I haven't actually seen other people talking about that. So it could just be my lens. I'm just going with what I have and letting you guys know this one does have a problem for me at the moment. This is very much an overview of these lenses. I do intend to compare the Sure 16 millimeter to the Sigma 16 millimeter. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments down below and hit the subscribe button so you can be sure to check that out. Also, if it does come up with an update, I will let you guys know. If you did enjoy this video, do hit the like button, drop a comment down below, or maybe even subscribe as we continue to build this channel. I appreciate all of you for doing so, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.